this is Gary with Cubase Academy. Thanks for checking out this video. Hopefully things don't go too awry. I've got a project that is just <laughs> sucking the life out of my processor today. It's uh, some 50 tracks of audio, and I wanted to talk about something that I've seen posted on forums, and uh, people are frustrated with the fact that they're, if they want to reset a mix and try it again from scratch or just try something different on a mix, this doesn't seem to be an easy way to do that. So I'm going to cover two things today. One is resetting the mixer, and two is a quick way to set up your channels uh, for when you start a new project or if you zero out the mixer and you have um, something, a standard that you use across your channels to quickly implement that. Anyway, this workflow stuff. So let's start with the um, first part, which is resetting the mixer. So I have this project that has, um, like I said, some about 50 tracks. I don't know. It's uh, um, a decent amount of uh, audio and subs and all those kinds of fun things in a, in a project. So, uh, a lot of tracks. And if I had, and you can see there's a lot of processing going on uh, on every, almost every track with something. So, if I want to reset this, you know, going through and selecting uh, an effect and pressing uh, backspace, which is the way to remove something from, the manual way to remove something from the channel is pretty tedious. And then you've got to go through and uh, reset your pans. You know, you can control click on a pan to reset it, and you can control click on a fader to set it to uh, unity gain. But all of that can be um, oops. All of that can be taken care of with this menu option up here. Mixer, function menu, reset, mix console channels. Now, you won't, <laughs> this doesn't get put in the history, okay? So if I do this, which I'm going to do, reset all. Now, so you can just reset select it. I'm going to reset all. And it will... Let's go over what it did. First of all, it resets all of the levels to unity gain or zero. Uh, then it also reset all of the panning. And it cleared out all the EQ. Okay. It cleared out all of the inserts. I'm going to put that close. And routing. What did it do? Well, it set everything to stereo out, which if you had things routed to subgroups have now been cleared out. Um, I've had instances too where actually it set it to no routing whatsoever. So it wasn't audible at all. Um, and if we look at uh, our, um, our, our channel, so right now I've got channel one selected, which is kick in and it's routed to stereo and that was just re that's part of the reset okay empty inserts i mean everything has been reset equalizers everything which is what you would expect from a, a channel reset but um you know sound has to go somewhere right and normally this would go to a kick subgroup so i have a kick subgroup over here right here and of course it's going to be completely nothing's routed to it right now so we have to reset up our routing, but let's, I mean, the real key here is everything was reset. Uh, so let me show you a couple of tricks to get you back up and running again quickly after a reset. First of all, the uh, routing here, you really want, uh, I really want all these drums to be routed to a drum subgroup. So if I click on the first one, and then I shift click on the last uh, drum. I can change the routing here, and I want it to go to the drum sub. Now, if I want it to affect everything that's selected, I have to press Alt Shift. Now I'm holding down the Alt Shift combination, and I'm selecting the drum group. 
and you'll see that everything changed to drums. So now all the drums are going to the drum group. Now for the bass, some would argue I wouldn't need a group for that, but I like consistency, so there's a bass group, even though there's only one bass. And um, for the guitars, again, click on the first one, shift click on the second one, hold down alt shift, and change the grouping to guitar. There. So I'm very quickly able to go through and make those changes. And if scrolling, if you've got a lot of tracks, there's 55 in here, as I said before. If you've got a lot of tracks, you may want to take advantage of this uh, zones. Uh, and, and I've got, I, my zones are broken up. Uh, and I'll do another video on folders because it's a huge workflow boost. But I can click on this and it takes me to my first keyboard track. And then click shift click on the last one. And now all my keyboard tracks are selected both in the, um, in the main uh, track window and in the mixer window. So now I can Alt-Shift and send all of those to the keyboard. Subgroup. Actually, some of those go into the bridge subgroup, but I am not worried about that for this lesson. And then finally, the vocals will go into the vocal subgroup. Uh, again, I don't have to even go to my mixer window or my track window. I can select it here. Uh, and now I can bring in uh, this window, which is the channel settings window, which highlights the first selected track. Shift, Alt, Shift again, and I can just send these straight to vocals. Okay. And you'll see here, they all did change. Right. So um, it's very easy for me to navigate through um, the channels and assign them the way I want them. So now I have all of my sub, uh, all of my instruments assigned to the subgroups that I want them assigned to. Very, very quick. Now, let's suppose I have some, an insert chain that I really want to use on all my drum tracks. Well, you know, you can copy and paste individual and you can click and drag individual effects. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, load an effects chain that I like called my startup. And I actually don't really want, uh, I'm using my H key on the keyboard to expand this out. I don't really want this one, so I'm just going to remove this one. Uh, and there you go. So this is kind of how I want this set up uh, in my um, inserts. I don't think I need anything in my pre, any low or high cut. That's fine. Uh, if I wanted to turn on something in my uh, channel strip for drums, if I wanted to use a little uh, compression or saturation, uh, I can do that here. Here, I'll turn on the compressor just so we have something to look at. I'll make a couple of changes here. So I've made some changes to kick drum channel one. Now, all I have to do to, to apply it to all of these is click, shift, click. Again, I could use the navigator uh, over here if I turn it back on, but whatever, I'm in the mixer. And I could come up here to this uh, again to the the, um, the menu that's functions menu we saw earlier and I could copy the first selected channel settings and then I could paste the selected channel settings but it's just control C control V so with this window active I'm going to control C and then control V and what that will do is it will set up all my drum channels to be exactly the same notice that you'll see that all these are turning on so now they have all the strip compressor turned on, and every insert channel has a copy of the settings. And, and not just that, but also the plugins that are in, or the plugin settings that are in there. So very quickly, I was able to set up all my drum channels the way I want them to start. And I could have done it just to the drum channels, or I could have done it to the entire mix, whatever made sense. I could have gone through and done everything. Uh, so. There's a, a quick way to reset your mixer to 
reset your routing, which is very important. So when it resets the routing, um, you know it set the output to stereo. Well, it sets the input to whatever is the first your first channel in um, the audio connection window. Okay, so my first channel is this 3-4, so it automatically sets every input by default to this uh, input channel, uh, which uh, I guess it doesn't necessarily matter unless you um, have a specific input template that you use. Um, you can pick any one of these to make it the default. Um, just say set this one as the default bus, and next time you reset your uh, mixer, that's where it'll go. Um, but again, um, it, it's easy to select all the channels and just reset this. You can see you can pick any bus or no bus. It's probably what it should do. Uh, notice that here's something important. Uh, this has no bus, right? If I select this. Uh, channel kick and select all the channels and do another copy paste the one thing that is not affected is the routing so routing is not affected by copy paste it's you have to do that in in an in an additional step but again uh, if I wanted these to be no bus I could hold down uh, I could select them all hold down alt shift and select no bus and then everything will be no bus. And if I wanted to do that across my entire project, uh, I could click my um, navigation window here, and I could start with the first track and go all the way down to my last track. I'm going to ignore the groups and my narration mic, of course, and I'm going to just Alt Shift and set them all to no bus. And there we go. The whole project is now. Um, has no bus. So, um, resetting the mixer and then um, quickly reestablishing some uh, defaults for the channels, uh, routing and inserts, etc., etc., using um, Alt Shift and choosing options in the routing and then using copy paste to paste the rest of the channel settings all the way uh, across the mixer as needed. Great. Had a few technical issues on this video, but hopefully it was still useful to you. And if it is, please click the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.